Welcome everybody to the third episode of Leverett Analytics. I am your host, Leverett KT. And if you paid attention and you were tuned in, a bunch of people were tuned in to the Atlanta Falcons episode. I teased at the end. Y'all already know who my team is, Buffalo Bills. We go in alphabetical order. So it's time to circle the wagons. The Buffalo Bills are up next for their off-season playbook. I ain't going to waste no time. Let's get straight into it. The top five paid Buffalo Bills players are Tredavious White, who's making $14 million a year. The last two teams we talked about, the Arizona Cardinals, uh, the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> Atlanta Falcons top paid player uh uh on their cap this year would be Matt Ryan at 41 mil. Y'all heard what I just said. The top paid bill right now is Tredavious White at only 14 mil. This is what makes the Bills not only a good team, a good organization. Shout out to our owner, the Pagulas. Shout out to our general managers, Brandon Bean. Shout out to our head coach. What a great coach, Sean McDermott. Um, Tredavious White, 14 mil on the cap PFF grade of 74.5. This year he had three interceptions, 75 catches on 55 targets. That is not bad at all. 41.7 is his PFF grade against the run. Uh, 93.4 pass rusher. He's a better pass rusher than giving credit for. And then 77.9 coverage. And he was first team all pro this year. Deservingly so. Uh, back-to-back pro uh, Pro Bowls with your Davis White as well. Up next, the number two highest-paid Buffalo Bill player is your Diggs, Stephon Diggs, at twelve point three million. You telling me the guy that led the the league in catches and receiving yards is only getting twelve point three million a year? Brandon Bean, Brandon Bean, you deserve a raise, my friend. Uh, Stephon Diggs, PFF. Grade is 89.4. He had 127 catches, which led to NFL uh, for 1,535 yards, which also led to NFL for eight touchdowns. First team all pro for your digs. I'm, uh, let, let me say something about Stephon Diggs. I remember the day he got traded. It was a, uh, I don't know if it was a couple days or a couple weeks after it was reported um, that we might be getting – and and well actually that was the year before we was uh uh I remember um who was it? It wasn't Adam Schefter. It was Ian Rappaport reported that the Buffalo Bills is about to get Antonio Brown. I remember how excited I was and then Antonio Brown on Twitter tweeted fake news. Fast forward one year later, we get the news that we're getting Stefan Diggs. I remember Vikings fans being so elated. Oh, it's it's y'all it's Buffalo's problem now. Wait till we get there. Wait till we get there. He's gonna be a problem. Nope, he hasn't been a problem. Now for Minnesota, they got a hell of a ball player on Justice Jefferson. The trade worked out for both teams, but this trade really made the Buffalo Bills an elite team. Third highest paid player for the Buffalo Bills is Deion Dawkins coming in at the left tackle. If you didn't know that, coming in at eleven. Point four million, and you know that I had to say that for my boy uh, Deion Dawkins, man. He bringing swag uh, back to the offensive lineman. Uh, this year, he only had four penalties, six sacks allowed. He needs to get that number down. Uh, what scares me about Josh Allen? Uh, a lot of times when he fumbles the ball, it's coming from that blind side. Deion Dawkins, you got to protect him, man. But with that being said, Deion Dawkins was named to the Pro Bowl this year. Top three Bills players that are paid. The top paid players, 14 million, 12 million, 11 million. Two of them, first team all pro, the other one a pro bowler. This is the sign of a really good team. Not only a really good team, but a really good organization uh, with a GM who really understands money. Up next, Mitch Morse was getting 10.3 million a year. He has a PFF grade. Of 65.8 He has 6 penalties on a year 1 sack allowed mm, That's decent And then uh, the 5th highest uh, paid Bills player Which was surprising to me Was uh, Mario Addison Coming in at uh, 10.2 million He has a uh, 57.7 PFF grade He has 20 solo tackles 4 assists, 6 sacks And he's like that 5-6 uh, technique A lot of times he'll line up Um Right where the left tackle is Sometimes outside shoulder of the left tackle And it's sometimes right in front Of the tight end which makes it uh, um, A six technique So this year was definitely A great year for, for Bills fans it, it gave us uh, For those who remember 
It made us reminisce about the, those Buffalo Bills teams in the early 90s. And there's one thing I want to say to, to Bills fans. Yes, we lost four Super Bowls straight. We've been hearing that for forever. But we got the four Super Bowls. And we were dominant in the AFC. Super dominant, man. K-Gun offense. Can't haul that center. Andre Reed, a receiver. Thurman Thomas, one of the greatest running backs to ever do it. Because he can catch that ball out the backfield as well. Bruce Smith, Cornelius Bennett. Daryl Talley, come on, man, Nate Odoms, Henry Jones, Mark Kelso, come on. We got some ball players on this team as well. Uh, now, this, uh, this approaching offseason, we do got some, some, some players we got to decide if we want to pay or not. So, uh, last episode, I explained to everybody what, it, what an unrestricted free agent was. I'll explain it again. An unrestricted free agent pretty much means they have been with the team for four or more years. Um, thus, they can sign with any team they would like. The first person I'm going to talk about is Matt Milano. Matt Milano, I think this past year, was the most important player on the Bills' defense. A lot of Bills fans can be like, okay, Lever KT, what are you talking about? We lost one game this year with Matt Milano in a lineup. I, bu- I believe we were 11-1. The only game we lost was um, an AFC Championship to the Kansas City Chiefs. For some reason... I, I don't know why. It seems like Tremaine Edmonds, who's a pro bowler this year, shout out to Tremaine uh, Edmonds, he plays much better when Matt Milano is on the field. I don't know if because he has like less, less responsibilities because Matt Milano is really good in coverage. He's really good in space as well. Um, but Buffalo Bills fans, I hate to tell you this, um, I think we undervalued Matt Milano. Yes, he was injured quite often, but he's a hell of a ball player. His market uh, value was thirteen point uh, is thirteen million a year. We're not gonna be able to afford him. I mean, y'all know how free agency works. When this show, I like to be completely honest. Uh, we're not gonna be able to afford Matt Milano. He'll be going elsewhere. Uh, hopefully, we can address that need in a draft. Um, but that's definitely a. a <laughs> A hole that, like I say, whether it's free agency, whether it's the draft, we're definitely going to have to fill. So I believe Matt Milano, I'm a restricted free agent. Somebody is going to know his worth and they're going to give him some money. Probably overvalue money. So if his market value is $13 million a year, somebody's going to give him around that $14.5 million a year. Maybe a two or three year deal. And he'll, he'll gladly accept with a bunch of guarantees. Uh, Trent Murphy is an unrestricted free agent. He's another player I don't believe we're going to sign, especially with having uh, Mario Anderson, Jerry Hughes um, on the defensive line. I don't know if if we're going to end up paying Trent Murphy. Uh, Tyler Croft, he's a great tight end when he plays. Just doesn't play quite often enough. Um, I would actually like to see the Bills get into some more 12 personnel. Um, But I, I don't think they'll be bringing them back. So the offensive line is where... It gets it gets uh interesting. We got uh Tynishki, uh we got uh John Feliciano, Brian Winters, Daryl Daryl Williams. I feel like out of those four, they gotta sign two of them. So then you say, what two do you want to sign? I feel like Daryl Williams had a pretty solid year at right tackle. Uh Feliciano, um he played some games, some games he didn't play Brian Winters. Uh I feel like Nishki is gone for sure. It's just who else is gone. But I believe the Bills are going to sign two or the four. I think the easy pick is Daryl Williams. And then outside of that, you kind of got to figure out which one you want to pick out of that. Andre Roberts. Andre Roberts has been a blessing in a return game. As Bills fans, he's going to say, he's going to break one eventually. He's going to break one. He's going to break one because he's so consistent, especially on the kickoff. Um, a lot of times he'll, he'll return it. He'll get you out to the 32, 33-yard line. That, that's underrated to be able to do that. Especially in this NFL where, where the kickoff is, is closer than it has been in the past. So, but I, I think he's another player we're just going to lose. Um, because he's a specialist, he's not productive in the, in the receiver game. Um, I don't, I just don't, I don't see the Bills keeping him. I don't, I don't see them keeping him at all. I was, I was looking at the contracts. I'm like, is there a way in which the Bills can keep him? And the answer is no. And I hate to say that, but Isaiah McKenzie deserves a chance to be 
the the return guy. We see what he did against the uh, Miami Dolphins week 17 where he told Josh Allen he's taking one to the crib and he can stay on the sideline, and he did just that. He took it to the crib. So I would love to see Isaiah McKenzie on punt returns. It'll be interesting to see if they're going to also have um, – Isaiah McKenzie as a kick returner as well. Um, I, I honestly, I guess the emergence of Gabriel Davis is the reason why we didn't see Isaiah McKenzie as often. Uh, because I thought uh, Gabriel Davis ran beautiful post routes and beautiful skinny routes, and he just always seemed to be open. He had like eight touchdowns on uh, not a lot of targets, so his touchdown to target ratio was probably like four to one or five to one. Absolutely amazing. So, when I said McKenzie, I feel like um, he, he will be great for for punt return. So, moving right along, uh, uh, Matt Barkley is also an unrestricted free agent. I like Matt Barkley. I really do. Uh, he came in a couple of years ago, uh, finished the game for us, and, I, and I believe he got a one for us as well. Uh, so, I would like to see him stay. Restricted free agents are Levi Wallace and Andre Smith. I don't know how I feel about the Bills cornerback, and I don't know if I'm overreacting. Please let me know in the comment section if I'm overreacting, but that Chiefs game, it was like we were forced to play zone because we can't play, man. We got Tredavious White. Love Tredavious White. I, I do believe he's one of the top-tier corners in this NFL. Uh, Teron Johnson. I, I I love him as a nickel corner. He he. Uh, Levi Wallace is where it gets interesting. Because I'm a huge fan of Levi Wallace, his story, his struggle, um, just how he just fought, fought, and fought. And uh, I think last year he was in the starting lineup. This year um, he wasn't. He kind of was like the third, fourth corner a lot of times. Are we bringing back Josh Norman? Josh Norman is also an unrestricted free agent. I thought Josh Norman uh, gave us a lot um, this past season, uh, especially when he played. So we, we got some decision making to do, I believe. Um, probably not free agency, but via the draft, we could definitely use another cornerback. Um, but like I say, I, I like our nucleus. I, I just wish we could play more man because I think that that was the key to beating Kansas City. If somehow you was able to bracket Kelsey, um, oh, Trey Day being able to check. And, and, and let's be clear, no one in the league could probably check Tyreek Hill one on one, but if he was able to contain Tyreek Hill one on one, then we could bracket coverage Kelsey. But you know, Pat Mahomes was getting all day in the pocket, and he was just able to pick the Bills apart in that playoff game. And on the other side, Josh Allen was just wasn't getting any time, and I was hearing people blaming him for that game. I was like, our offensive line didn't show up that game, our defense didn't show up that game. Yeah, we jumped out to a nine nothing league, but let, let's be abundantly clear. So. I want to talk about something. So, <clears throat> I want to talk about the curse of Doug Flutie. If you're a hardcore Bill fan, you know what I'm talking about. So, uh, and I'm going to make a parallel to something else. In 1999, Wild Card Weekend, the week before that, Doug Johnson had a great game against the Indianapolis Colts, who won the division that year. They weren't even playing their starters. And like Robin, you know, Batman and Robin, Wade Phillips was like, oh, I have an idea. We should start Ralph Johnson in the playoffs. What? Doug Flutie, all them games he won you that year. Yeah, a lot of those games wasn't pretty. Yeah, he wasn't that 6'4", six, 6'5", six, quarterback that everybody was looking for back in them days, like the Chargers drafting Ryan Leaf. But we're not going to go there. So they started Doug Flutie. I'm sorry, my apologies. They started Rob Johnson. And the Music City Miracle happened. That game, we just didn't score enough points. Frank Wachet was able to get it. Throw it back to Dawson. Touchdown, Bills lose the playoff game. For 18 years, 18 long years, nobody knows heartbreak like the Buffalo Bills. Four straight Super Bowl losses. 18 years without the playoffs. Nobody knows heartbreak like the Buffalo Bills. That's why we always circle in the wagons, baby. So, 18... Well, let's say let's call it seventeen and a half years later. Week eleven. Sean McDermott and I love Sean McDermott, but he had, he had his Robin moment. Like, oh, I have an idea. We're five and four. Let's bench Tyrod Taylor and put in Nathan Peterman. Five interceptions later, Sandy o, 
San Diego Chargers embarrass us, the veterans of the locker room is like, yo, you, you got to put Tyrod back in. Week 12, 2017, Sean McDermott just does that. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The curse was broken. That's the curse of Doug Flutie. I feel like I had to say that. I've been wanting to say that for so long. I needed my, my 30 for 30 curse of Doug Flutie moment, so I, I had to give y'all that. So let's get into some draft picks. Who does who does the Buffalo Bills have? Uh, what picks do they have in, in this draft? So remember last year we didn't have a first-round pick because of the trade uh, to the Vikings for Stephon Diggs. It was well worth it. Thank you, Minnesota. I feel like you all feel like y'all want to trade. We feel like we want to trade. Y'all got Justin Jefferson, who's going to be a great. Uh, and we have Stephon Diggs, who is a great. Uh, second round. Uh, so first round, the Buffalo Bills had the 30th pick. Uh, I looked at some mock drafts. Some have us taking uh, a tackle. Some have us taking a inside linebacker. Some have us taking us out outside linebacker. So it, it's all over the board. You really don't know. So as we get closer to the draft, I would do an update on this to see, like a, a mock draft special uh, specifically for the Buffalo Bills. In the third round, the Buffalo Bills have the 93rd overall pick. Uh, the fourth round pick is actually part of the Stephon Diggs trade, so that will be going to Minnesota. The fifth round, the Buffalo Bills had 160th pick. The fifth round, the Buffalo Bills had 173rd pick. The sixth round, the Buffalo Bills had a 210 pick. So not bad at all. So seven total picks in the NFL draft. I don't know if we're getting any uh, commissary picks, but we'll see. So <clears throat> I'm looking at the home and away opponents uh, for next year. Uh, we don't know when these games will be played. Um, like as I said in the last episode, you would like to say, "Oh, we can win this game. We can win that game." But we don't know injuries. We don't even know what offseason accusations will be made. And accusations will be lost. When you are a good team, and you're up up and coming team. You're going to lose pieces. It's it's part of the process. Matt Milano, I hate to see him go, but he's gone. As I stated earlier, so the home opponents we have uh, this upcoming season, we got the Miami Dolphins. New England Patriots, the Jets. Of course, you play your uh, divisional opponents. Once home, once away. We got the Atlanta Falcons at home. Uh, my boy Moon Vibes is a is a Falcons fan. Uh, we definitely gonna have a friendly wager on that uh, on, on Real Ones Productions. Uh, make sure y'all check us out on Twitch.tv slash Real Ones Productions. Uh, we are doing a Super Bowl preview starting at three thirty p.m. I know y'all probably used to watch it. You know your your, your Fox or. Yeah, your Pat McAfee, whatever pregame show you like to watch, come come share with us on Twitch, man. That's twitch.tv slash Real Ones Productions. Uh, another home game is the Carolina Panthers. And you know the Bills and Panthers have a lot of history with uh, both co uh, Coach Sean McDermott and our GM Brandon Bean, both coming from the Panthers organization. We also have the Texans home, and it'll be interesting to see uh, will Deshaun Watson be their quarterback next year. Also have the Colts home and the Steelers home, so... We got, uh, you know, eight home games, eight away games. Y'all know how I go. Uh, got some tough home opponents. Away, we got the Dolphins, Patriots, Jets. Uh, we also play the Jags away. The Jags got a lot of cap space. They're, they're going to be spending money this offseason, uh, believe you me. Uh, we play the Saints away. Uh, probably be interesting to see who they who they start at uh, quarterback. Uh, it should be Jameis Winston. If I wonder if they're keeping Taysom Hill. From what I've seen this year, Taysom Hill should not be the starting quarterback. Uh, we play the Tampa Bay Bucks away. Um, wish we were playing away uh, <laughs> at the Tampa Bay Bucks Stadium this week, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, we play the Titans away. Uh, we owe the Titans. We owe them. They they physically beat us last year. I I didn't like that one bit. And we also play the Chiefs away. And don't be surprised if that Chiefs game is the first game of the season, especially if they won the Super Bowl, that first Thursday night game. will probably be Chiefs-Bills Thursday night. Don't be surprised by that. So uh, uh, something else I wanted to address in this uh, episode number three with my Buffalo Bills and your Buffalo Bills for the fans who's listening. Josh, MVP, Allen. Yeah, I said it. He might not get the MVP. It'll probably be going to Aaron Rodgers, but he should be in the discussion. Uh, last time quarterbacks had numbers like this was Cam Newton, and he was able to win the MVP. So, Josh Allen is about to get paid. I'm talking about money, 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 money. Hey, money. Hey, Shorty about to get paid, man. Uh, 90.8 PFF grade, 37 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 8 rushing TDs, man. So, I was looking at the market value. What's the market value for Josh Allen? What would he accept? Is he getting Patty Mahomes money? 
it's not a lot of MLB players getting Patty Mahomes money, and that's one of the highest paid sports in the, in, in, in the United States. But I think he will be the second highest paid quarterback in the league because I think that matters to players. Um, so probably around forty million a year on a on a four year deal, which I think he deserves. I think he's. I think Josh Allen has arrived. I think we've seen every year he's progressed. He's progressed every year. Um, he loves Buffalo, and Buffalo loves him, and I think that's important. When we drafted him, I was like, I can see it. He has a strong arm. But that's all I knew about him because why it was it wasn't like Wyoming come on our TVs every Saturday, so we didn't know much about him. Try to look up highlights, but you you can't be mad at a hundred and forty million dollar deal over four years. The kid deserves it, and of course, uh, Brandon Bean will work it in a way in which it is uh, cap friendly, and he will try to give him a lot of money up front. That way, it's not hurting our salary cap as well. So I also wanted to 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 cap off this this season. I want to cap off this season by saying this. I know Bills fans are winning a Super Bowl. The Bills fans are deserving of a Super Bowl. Four straight Super Bowl losses. We went 18 years without a playoff appearance. But the Bills are back. The Bills are back. One of the things we need to address this offseason, obviously, is showing up the offensive line. I, I feel like our offensive line played better than anticipated. We don't have a lot of big names on the offensive line outside of Deion Dawkins. Uh, so I want to give a kudos to the offensive line. Yeah, they, they didn't look look great against the Kansas City Chiefs. And actually, the Kansas City Chiefs do did what the, I anticipated the Ravens doing, but the Ravens were afraid of Josh Allen. Um, so kudos. Uh, but the Bills need to address this running back position. I've seen teams over the years try to do this 1A, 1B running back thing. You know, lightning and thunder is what they like to call it. We've seen it with Ron Dane and Tiki Barber. You know, the Giants figured out, uh, 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 and also uh, uh, Brandon Jacobs and Tiki Barber. Uh, Lindell, Lindell White, when he was a Titans, and Chris Johnson. Like, I don't like the 1A, 1B thing. Do you have a running back? Granted, I, I don't. You know, Tennessee Titans ain't complaining because, you know, Derrick Henry's a 2K running back. But, you know, when they get down, he's on the sidelines a lot. On third downs, he's on the sideline a guy. So I don't necessarily want a must-have 25 total game running back. But I want a running back that can handle uh, carrying a rock 20 times a game. Who's in the draft we can get at 30th? I don't know. Of course, Bills fans would like somebody like Najee Harris, who is similar to Derrick Henry. Who can catch the rock out of the backfield? A uh, Travis is ETN. I think he was scared Bill fans because of CJ Spiller. It it'll be interesting, man. But I want to say, Buffalo Bills fans, you are the best fans in the world. Don't let nobody tell you different. Don't no other fan understand loyalty the way we do. Yes, Cleveland Browns fans do. Yes, Detroit Lions fans do. A lot of teams who teams haven't done good in a long time, yes, they, they deserve kudos as well. But there's no fans on this planet that are more faithful than Buffalo Bills fans. Don't no fans do more crazy stuff than Buffalo Bills fans. Jumping through tables, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in 10 degree weather with their shirts off, sitting in a hot tub. Bills fans, been crazy. Bills fans, been wired. And I'm going to leave you with this last thing. Circle the wagons. 2021 will be our year. I trust Brandon Bean. I know he's going to do the right thing. Uh, I was so happy we was able to keep uh, Leslie Frazier. I was so happy we were able to keep Brian the ball. Hey, man. Circle the wagons. Um, for the glossary this week, I didn't want to do one. And the reason I didn't want to do one was, is because the Bills don't need one. We understand everything, man. Circle the wagons. I'm out.